So the Dragonfly was um, basically, you know, a, a new category of vehicle for Star Citizen. We'd worked with small spaceships, one-seater, two-seater, multi-crew. The ships were just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and that was working for the universe. Um, but now with, uh, you know, three, well, 3.0 coming up and us sort of going planet side, which was just shown in the demos, uh, Chris really was pushing for a personal, personal vehicle, basically, essentially a space motorcycle, like a space hog. Um, and so with that in mind, the, you know, the Drake Dragonfly is kind of like the perfect candidate, you know, because it's, it's styling is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit lowbrow, you know, it's quite mechanical, especially, you know, we've just been dealing with the Caterpillar. And so, you know, we... Hi, everybody. Welcome to Reverse the Verse, a uh, special UK edition. It is Friday, uh, September 2nd, 2016. I'm your host, Community Manager Jared Huckabee. And with me today, a uh, special guest, Squadron 42 Art Director... Mr. Paul Jones, how you doing, man? Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm doing all right, thanks. Yeah, yeah. so it's we, good to be here. We finally got you on our TV, man. Yeah, somehow I've managed to avoid getting on yes. camera. Yeah, somehow you've managed to avoid it like before now. But every time the cameras come around, a meeting suddenly appears, and I move off. Yes, he's not joking about that. So I'll check his schedule. I'm like, hey, Paul, you want to be on a thing? And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe I'll check my schedule. And then we check his schedule, and meetings start popping up. It's like, don't, don't, I'm just teasing, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time to, to to chat with us on RTV. Now, yesterday on yesterday's ATV, we just saw a clip of that. Uh, you shared with us some of the continuing development on the Drake Dragonfly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so, real quick, what can you tell us about the Drake Dragonfly? What's it like working on that? What, what, what did you think when you first heard we're going to make a space motorcycle? <laughs> Uh, to be honest, I thought they were crazy. Uh, you know, just a lot of us were just like, what? Um, but then, you know, we started getting the design brief. Um, and it was quite interesting, actually, because we were, you know, we were working with this. Initially, we'd, I guess, we, we kind of made a mistake right at the start. We were working with the smallest ship components because mm -hmm. that was the brief we were working with. And, you know, I was working with Gary and we were putting this ship together and it was just getting larger and larger as we put all the components in that needed to be there were ship items. Um, and so we showed Chris and we were like, yeah, look at this, this is amazing, right? And, you know, Gary had done a good job on the initial sketch. Mm -hmm. um, and then Chris was like, well, it's too big, it's too big, what are you doing? And we were just like, well, these are the, these are the th you know, the requirements we're working to. So he was like, well, just make a, what did we change it to? It was a, uh, so it was, we went from, uh, small vi small ship to vehicle components vehicle basically parts, yeah. yeah and then basically the whole thing scaled down sounds super obvious but it was just a simple mistake right at the start yeah, yeah you're going going from the components that you would build a ship out of to the components you would yeah. build something like the ursa out of yeah we were just so in the mindset of ship 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 um, and that kind of thing happens because we don't fake anything. We actually build these ships in engine, mm -hmm. all their components. I mean, I mean, yes, it's a virtual world, of course, yeah. but I mean, they are functional within that virtual world. Oh, yeah. So you, yeah. Have, you have to have all the components where they're supposed to be, how they can interact with each other, because folks will be able to damage those components, have to repair those components, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that all those things have a very real and very physical place oh yeah yeah totally and it it's always a challenge for the concept guys because you know they've they've got this big laundry list of things that mm -hmm. need, need to go in it so they have this idea in the head and then and then they have to sort of like massage it to basically fit all these pieces in but uh you know one of the things i like about working with gary is that he always gives it's not i don't think it's a problem I, I, you know that would be a negative thing to say he huh. just gives me tons of options yes he does so yes, like he, he does. Can, you can tell the speed his head's going at and he just gives me like 50 options and i'm just like oh, i'll have a bit of this one i'll have a bit of that and a bit of that and a bit of that change this move these lines a little bit make it a little more drake it's, it's a good problem to have though yeah I'll it be. is and we you know we initially started off two sort of um it was too sleek, it wasn't it? wasn't within the Drake sort of manufacturer line, so I was having to bring him back, sort of, you know, dare I say, kind of make it a little more agricultural, mm -hmm. you know, sort of uh, a little heavier in places, a little more exposed tech, less, 
less sort of ex, um, expensive types of manufacturing, yes. basically. Not, not, not a Bucati. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or Ducati. Bucati. Yeah, Ducati. Not Ducati. Yeah. Bugatti. Bugatti. Ducati. I thought I went Bucati, Bugatti and Ducati and I merged, merged them, them together. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, yeah. So eventually um, we got it into the right place and yeah. There you go. Now, uh, subscribers can actually look in the subscriber vault and see images from, from the development of the Dragonfly. We've released them, several of them, several galleries over the last six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks, however long it's been since we first introduced the Dragonfly. So if you want to see some of those other, so some of those other uh, variations that Gary put together, they're available in the subscriber vault. Now, Paul, we're going to start taking questions from the fans mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm, uh, sure. Before we get started with that, why don't you tell us a little bit about the work you do for Squadron 42. Your title is Squadron 42 Art Director, but you work for both Squadron 42 and yeah. Star Citizen. Yeah, so initially it was Squadron 42 focused and, you know, we were, we were sort of defining what Squadron 42 was and, and it, you know, it touches on a lot of things, ships, environments, weapons, VFX, you name it. Um, and currently sort of the workload has shifted so that um, and that's mainly because we've got more art directors now. Mm. So we've got Nathan in charge of ships, Ian in charge of environments. Um, so I've, you know, I've, at the moment I'm sort of focusing a lot on ship concepts, um, sails, <clears throat> FPS weapons, ship weapons, VFX, ship items, and props. So that's that's pretty much just a couple things. Yeah, just a yeah, couple of things. Yeah, so just you know, spin those plates, and uh, you know, each day is always a you know crazy ride because you just you know, you know what generally what you have to work with, but then things just come in yeah. emergencies and yeah. stuff. You did a great you did a great job on the uh, Dragonfly brochure. I remember. Oh, well, I, I did that, that. I did the first kind of cheesy mock-up with my meager skills, oh, yeah. and then you showed up like, "Oh, you mean like this?" I know, but and we I'm had like, a good oh. base to work from. So, <laughs> so, 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 you, so you laid it down. I'm like, "Oh, okay." So I, so I'll just do those funny little ads, you know. And so <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to make the ads, you know, at least somewhat up to the standards that you were putting together. So but it was good. That you know, it was it was properly like motivated, and you know, like you saw, you know, I was doing t-shirts yes. and all crazy sorts yeah. of things yes. so. there, there is a dragonfly t-shirt that 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 paul designed that uh yeah i'm not going to say we're going to sell it or anything just to, he did it on his own and it is it is quite good and i'll see if i can get permission and maybe show it on, maybe we'll maybe on, we'll just print a few media. of our own and oh, you know just yes just print you know you just just yeah. two little mm -hmm. two little dragonfly shirts yep. there. <laughs> so, so with all that that you're doing for Star Citizen, uh, we're taking questions from a general chat on the Robert Space Industries website. So you go to robertspaceindustries.com, log in with your Star Citizen account, uh, go up to community up top, go down to chat below. And in the general tab, that's where we're collecting questions. Uh, you can do me a favor and preface your question with the word question in capital letters surrounded by brackets. That helps me pull it out from the other conversations that are going on inside the chat. Um, let's see, we see if we've got any questions here. Now remember that Paul is, uh, essentially an art guy, you know, you're, you're an art uh, guy, you're, yeah. you're, 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 in charge of, 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 of the way that things look, look the visuals. You know? yeah. yeah. So, so if, so if you're asking questions like, why, why does this ship go this fast? I'm Probably not going to be able to tell you. Yeah. Uh, why does this thing sound like this thing? That's the yeah, audio team, not, not Paul. So remember to keep, try to keep your questions, uh, art focused. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, uh, we have a question here. It says, will the Dragonfly planetary mode e handling evolve where hitting bumps, you might get a bit more air. Now, we, we, st we did see some some in-engine gameplay of the Dragonfly mm -hmm. in around the verse yesterday. Uh, and it does it does appear to take the terrain, you know, the, the terrain below it into account when it's with its handling. Mm -hmm. Now, again, uh, you're an art guy, not, not a physics programmer or a gameplay yeah, programmer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was there any consideration in the building of the Dragonfly for how it would... Yeah, totally, yeah. Uh, and uh, that's kind of how, like, the Gravlev technology sort mm -hmm. of came around. And, you know, we wanted these sort of pontoons so that... Uh, dare I say, you know, that it harks back a little bit to Star Wars, maybe, you know, it's pod... What it's, doesn't, though? It's a pod racer almost, isn't it? So, you look at, you're always looking for... The words for and opinions of Paul Jones do not reflect Clad Games, Games, <laughs> 42, or its subsidiaries. It's always, um, you know, you're always looking for opportunities to sort of um, add extra cool, basically. You don't just want a static vehicle, so... Um, you know, I think you know as a, you know as our first sort of foray into this, uh, it was a good start. And then uh, you know we've already uh, this, just this week we've been working on uh, just some high level 
uh, variants, manufacturer variants. Mm-hmm. You know, Chris has sort of been Chris has been mentioning it to me. You know, he didn't say start on it, but um, we had a bit of bit of downtime, so I've had Gary on that doing a doing a little secret Black Ops project. Really, variants of the Dragonfly? Or no, no, no. Else? Just like other oh, other sort oh, of other stuff we can yeah, talk about. Yet. Yeah, All yeah. Right. Right. So, and it's completely like we weren't following any brief uh, there's nothing from design we were just making cool stuff so off the reservation we're, so we're just going to give it to chris and just see see what he thinks cool i i've been trying to get i've been trying to convince somebody that a stealth variant of the 300 series called the origin 404 spaceship not found right right would no, be a nice, good idea nice yeah, yeah no no, 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 no nobody's been oh, no, nobody's been interested uh here's another question from the chat why are there so many drake logos on the dragonfly i swear there's like a dozen of them that's probably an exaggeration i don't think there are a dozen logos um i think we do have a tendency to over um over brand our products um and where we are in the process of sort of taking sort of Reducing the manufacturer brand and then sort of changing it out to be the actual logo. So, gotcha. well, uh, it's, it's, it's like, an easy thing to change anyway. Yeah, it, when you're cre- when you're creating anything creative, it's easier to start big and reduce than it is yeah, to start yeah. small and try to build on that. And, you know, it's, it's classic, isn't it? And anything with Star Citizen, you know, you have you have the first generation and then you and then you tweak it and then we tweak it again and then hopefully. She'll be pretty close to being done. Well, that's game development. It's yeah, iterative. Yeah, it's totally. iterative. Um, all right. It wouldn't be an RTV without a question about two very specific ships. Uh-huh. We were joking about it. He didn't believe me before. I said, you're going to watch. And chat's going to fill up with questions about, about, about two specific ships that, that, that dominate the minds of our, of our fandom. What can you tell us, if anything, mm-hmm. about the Banu Merchantman? Uh, so the Banu, that's a good one. Um, so that one, so it's already had its first round concept, mm-hmm. hasn't it? It's been sold. It's been sold. Yeah, it's been, it? it's yes. been sold. Um, and we're just in the process now, sort of spooling up to do second round concept. Because mm-hmm. um, we do, you know, we're aware that it, it's been out there for a long time. People have people haven't got it yet. You know, it's not mm-hmm. it's not for sale. Um, and so we're just in that process of um, lining up lining up a concept artist hopefully the same one who originally started on it um and going through the archetypes so gotcha. um engineering habitation gotcha because the first the, the ship was originally concepted there weren't bad new archetypes created yet no, so, I no. Mean, we, we weren't at that point in our overall development where we had archetypes for anvil and Aegis and stuff like that so so part of the stage two concepting will be creating those banu archetypes what mm. does a banu engineering room look like what yeah. does a banu bridge look like and stuff and that'll that'll go into the 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 revised concept of the banu yeah regimen. and just a, you know a little more thinking about the technology or uh you know what's the hook what's the you know say with the Xi'an uh, scout we mm-hmm. had the you know that's when we started to do the sort of floating steps and the sort of again the grav lev mm-hmm. kind of technology um and you know again just just you know stopping and pausing for a little bit have a little chat about what you know and uh we you know as a company we've got a lot better about sort of working together mm-hmm. and just sort of going yeah well this would be cool or you know what what is sort of what's missing from our palette of, of races you know what what would we like to see mm-hmm. um and so that will all be part of this next round and when we talk about a, a revised a second wave concept we're not talking about drastic changes no, that you no. know changes to the to the overall pro to the profile and stuff like that we're talking about additive stuff th- th- things to enhance what's there to better define yeah. it to make it work within the game world i mean um you know the exterior i think both me and nate are happy with um and then it's pretty much the interior just obviously making it flow better working out materials you know what what are the banner materials what would we expect to see in this area that area uh, and just sort of working out sort of uh, essentially the style guide <laughs> so that for all the other ones then we can you know if it regardless of whether it goes out of house or stays in house we have our rules that we stick to and it's like okay it's this yep. and just makes it just a lot faster so that's on the schedule that's in the works waiting for an artist to come ready mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay yep and uh yes i know everybody what can you tell us if anything about the anvil carrick 
So the Carrick, um, that's, that's actually in a similar position. Um, probably will be tackled in in house. Uh, so it's had first round concept, hasn't it? It's been sold. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we've done a lot of Anvil small ships and we pretty much have the style nailed for those. Um, so we can, you know, we can bang them out. It's, you know, it's, yeah, yeah it's still, it's still like two months, three months work. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, it's not easy work. But. It's, but it's now almost a production line, which is good. Um, but for the larger ships, they sort of, that, this, it will be the first one. Yeah, it'll be the very first large multi-crew anvil ship that we that we'll have to like, build out. And it'll just be again. It'll just be second round concept. Work out the archetypes. Uh, you know what is what is an anvil interior. You know what makes what makes it cool. What you know what what's what's going to be the visual hook. Um, and that's like I said. I think that'll be internal, and I think it'll be Nathan will be handling most of that. Mm. So pass that one off <laughs> all right <laughs> uh, all right and uh let's see let's get one more oh and then here's the next question uh polaris polaris yeah that's in good shape that one's looking really slick um we're now on to um we'd sort of well we thought we were finished um <laughs> and then chris uh requested a few more visuals for it so a few more interior shots um phil Mello wanted one extra action shot so we'll provide that and then we'll be moving on to the sort of full full marketing material. Gotcha. So, so the Polaris is the new uh, the, the, the new Corvette to replace the Idris Corvette that mm -hmm. evolved into a frigate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's made by RSI. Yep. Uh, we're pretty far along and uh, we, it's something we hope to share with folks soon. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to it. I mean, it's one of the, you know, of the, of the new ships. Uh, there's a lot of people internally who are like, yeah, I want that ship. So we must, hopefully we're doing something right. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, Paul, thank you so much. Uh, I told you, told you the time's it does, done. It, does, it, does, yeah, it, does, it goes by, by fast, isn't it? Thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and chat with us on RTV today. Uh, guys, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Nathan Deersley. Myself and Chris have had quite a few discussions um, regarding the the dead ships. Uh, we were also quite both passionate about having planets that are potentially completely dedicated to ship salvage. So with the derelict ships, as always as explained, we want to take the stuff that already exists in the game, which are broken up parts of the ships, that once the ship suffers catastrophic damage, it breaks apart. Um, how can we reuse these assets and, and kind of be very creative with them? The stuff that you saw in Gamescom was very much the first step of that. Um, we are already progressing further with it. So the work uh, that we're doing, as we've always explained, has always got a, lot, a longer path. Obviously, we've got kind of 3.0 coming due at the end of the year. The, the work that we're doing does fit into that. Um, it, again, it's really kind of about kind of creating these, these, these options for design to have. So. Uh, if you come across uh, a derelict ship in, in space, don't be shocked. It's not a bug. It was always supposed to be there. Uh, it, it, thank you. Hey guys, welcome back uh, to part two for today's RTV live from the UK with our second guest, uh, art director, art director, vehicle, vehicle art, art director, vehicle art director, Nathan Deersley. How mm. you doing, man? I'm good, mate. How are you? Good. This is your second RTV, man. I want to eat the microphone. It, it's like, it's massive. Yeah, well, it's designed it's, to, you know, I'm running the air conditioner here because I, I, I enjoy the finer things. And I'm hungry. This, this, I am this. hungry. But the, uh, well, yeah, well, I can see now why the HUD helmet in the game works the way it does. <laughs> yeah, interesting. There we go. All right. So, uh, Nathan, you showed us uh, some, well, last time on, our, on ATV, you showed us catastrophic damage of capital ships. Yeah. Uh, on yesterday's ATV, you, you brought out derelict starfare, not just in space but down on the planet's surface. Yep. So what can you tell us about, uh, what can you tell us about creating that? Um, why does that exist? What, why do you do what you do? <laughs> Put you on the spot. Yeah, that is. Um, no, it, it was always, um, when we discussed like the, the Idris stuff, it was always uh, a plan to kind of start, start these passes on every ship. Um, we done the Gamescom um, derelict, which um, was really kind of like the, the first step of that. And then uh, from there, it's kind of, we, we've got these assets, we've got this cool kind of um, ship that the guys have made. And, and it's really about kind of taking those, those uh, elements and, and getting creative with um, 
what we, what we can do with those on on terrain surfaces. So for sure, we've had in, there's been inspiration from you know the the episode seven stuff, which is kind of uh, very cool. Um, LV forty six with the alien downship. There's the you know there's these kind of call outs that you can kind of um, refer to. Um, the most successful ones for me are always the ones that have got the emotion and the human aspect in there. So with the Starfarer, it's like, you know, anyone can go along and, and, and kind of plow something into the sand and call mm. it a day. But, you know, I'm not saying that we're not going to do that, but there's also, um, there's also that kind of, that, that emotional drive behind everything. Mm. Um, so hence, you know, someone's kind of made it their home. There's a little chimney there. There might be a little boy yeah. in there. You know, the, all these kind of little touches that we've, we've got that stuff ready to go. Um, so yeah, just kind of a little bit of ambient storytelling, which on the ship team, um, we don't get to do too much of It's more kind of environment driven. So it's a nice kind of break, um, from that stuff, obviously production on the, on the ships continues. Um, but it, it's nice to, to, to kind of jump around a bit and, and, and get, like I say, just get, get kind of creative and, t and tell a story without, without any dialogue. And, and if you can do that, you, you're kind of winning. Just go closer Fisher. All right. Mean, sorry. Uh, sorry. Come on. Sorry. Oh. There you go. Pretend you like me. You don't want to put your chair on top of my neck. <laughs> Getting a bit close enough. So, so yeah. So, uh, big surprise that LV, you know, 426, the uh, alien influence on, on on something you worked on, really? No, That's not this one. No, not this one at all. I've not, I've not, I've not looked at anything <laughs> alien related. <laughs> Nothing alien related at no, all. No, 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 not for this one. No, no. Yeah. It, it, it was very much kind of. Um, I've wanted to do it for for ages, and yeah. and the the planetary stuff when it when it's come on board, and you know, we got the the proper scattering system for the light, so we can totally drive like a proper kind of desert feel or a sunset or a sunrise. Um, so it's just yeah, just kind of go for it. Um, it's by no means final. It'll probably end up kind of looking a bit better than that. Um, but yeah, that was that was put together fairly rapidly. So the 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 kind of the overall kind of approach for it all is to um, essentially have loads of these mm -hmm. made um with different different kind of compositions different stories um different layouts um that 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 design can populate with npcs and create missions yeah and... create missions uh, and it, but it's also kind of like that feeds into the procedural system then so um yeah i'm excited i'm excited uh, you know there's there's a, a really good scene in um oblivion the tom cruise movie yeah. where he's just walking along walking along this terrain and he just kind of falls through the glass mm -hmm. There's nothing there, and that, that even that excites me. So you, 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 he falls through, and then all of a sudden he's in in some sky. I think it's the Empire State, but I'm not sure. But mm -hmm. um, that's super cool. So like you could be walking along, and you could hear the sound of the terrain changing. Just, okay, what's under uh, under there? And you know, down you go. So visually, you, it, it could be interesting, um, but also visually, it could be nothing until you're on top of it. So yeah, stuff like that. Gotcha. And those scenes that we saw in EGB yesterday, those are 100% in CryEngine. Those are rendered in Engine, right? Yes, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Uh, you can actually, um, you can just run around the map now. Um, you can, yeah, it's all real time. Uh, the the that's the best thing about our engine is just everything that you see is what you play. So at any time, like I, I, I've, I found myself today kind of uh, with, with that scene because I'm just polishing up a little bit more. Um, press control G, you're in the game. Um, and, and thinking about um, game kind of gun gunplay, so vantage points, you know, view distances, all, all these kind mm -hmm. of how how you know I've done a lot of multiplayer map design at Crytek, um, so it's kind of like you, that never leaves you. So it's like okay, when I come out the door here, where are the weak spots, where are the vantage points, and every kind of every area should have, uh, should we say, a cause and effect or an equal. Does that make sense? Yeah. So high risk, high reward kind of thing. It's that typical kind of quake thing where it's like, okay, there's a turret on top of that ship. If I get there, it's going to be great, but it has to be risky to get there. So there's all these things that I'm already th sort of thinking about with design as well. So it could be quite, quite cool. All right. Uh, so uh, one of the questions that, we, that we, we've we gotten quite often since we showed that the catastrophic damage of, of, the, of, the, of the ships before and now this, uh, Will derelicts derelicts are they procedurally created or are they artists created and then placed within procedural worlds? 
there are there are artists created they're handcrafted um you you have to do it you have to do that to kind of get that quality mm -hmm. uh, but then they're procedurally the plan is to have them procedurally distributed gotcha um yeah and you you can create these pretty quickly now yeah that took that 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 whole scene in that whole scene in that video took me one day one day one day no, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a, like I say, all these things are coming on board now. And like, obviously, I didn't make all the assets in one day. <laughs> uh, it's all, uh, you know, the, 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 the editor work where you kind of, you got your library of goodies mm -hmm. and you're just like, okay, go. You know, we got, we got all these kind of, the environment guys are creating all these kind of tall, cool terrain things. Mm -hmm. So you just get, you get creative with what you got. And it, it's very much kind of the mythology at Crytek was that, that's kind of stuck with me as well where we, we'd have these kind of libraries of, of just awesome stuff. Yeah. And uh, there comes a point where you just have to work with what you've got, right? Um, and that's what we've done here. And um, it's very much kind of early days, but that's, yeah. yeah well, that's, that's game so development much. though. It's, it's the, the improvements are exponential. You know, the first year on a project is not equal to the second year on a project, is no. not equal to the fourth year on a project. I no. mean, the, the improvements and the speed at which you can create things just increases exponentially once you've got that foundation of systems in place. It's, it's you have to speculate to accumulate with, with game development. It, it, it's very kind of, um, like you say, the, the, the development curve is very flat for quite a quite a while then it kind of accelerates and accelerates and accelerates until you're pretty much on autopilot um and we're, we're kind of approaching that crest now uh, in in my opinion we are um and i you know i've got quite a bit of experience and i've seen kind of several games kind of go out the door triple a games and yeah it's all it's all shiny shiny from the outside and all the trailers are great kind of when you when you see that stuff but when you're actually involved in the project mm -hmm. Um, it's really interesting to see, yes, the, it's all there and it's working, but the, the real kind of push comes in the last kind of six months of development because that's when all the systems are working in harmony, all the visuals are there, all the assets are there and, and everyone's in tune, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's a very human thing developing games. It's a very, it's, it's what fascinates me the most about it. Um, and it's why I started working in, cause I used to work for myself. I, mm -hmm. it's why I came back into working in the studio. So because uh, I missed it and yeah it's uh that's that's the result you know that one day thing is the result of all that where you you speculate to accumulate you invest and then it and then the reward pays off later on so yeah that's good uh damage shaders now damage shaders are used commonly for smaller ships and stuff like stuff like that uh this this fan asks are are damage shaders something that can be implemented for larger ships like Idris's or it's like that how, 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 is it the same process do they do they scale uh it's really kind of um a case of when you go up in scale the construction techniques slightly change for everything um even like the base without even talking about shaders the base modeling and everything has to be different because because it, it, you have to render it all and it has to all fit mm -hmm. in memory right um but when it comes to like shaders it, it's really kind of a case of, of authoring these shaders and, and being kind of clever with things like kind of detail maps um we we have the facility to to cake um to cake info into a second uv channel so we can use that as a mask to bleed through so every kind of ship when you hit it at the moment you get all this this beautiful kind of um we call it gubbins um this beautiful kind of mechanical detail starts uh, coming through um with the with the capital ships it's 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 very much that but kind of like times 10 because it's the scale right so you 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 will still dissolve meshes away which we're doing at the moment but what's underneath that with a capital ship is just generally far deeper it's got far more lighting information in it and, and again you can kind of look at so much kind of successful ips that have done this stuff in in in, in cinema um you know the, the star destroyer's got a, what we call kind of sandwich um design approach of a cavity down the side and it's okay for me, if you took that top skin off, you took that bottom skin off, it's going to be all that. It's like, it's, it's like, you know, R2D2, C3PO, he's mm -hmm. got all that stuff kind of exposed. So it's, it's like that, but on a magnitude of scale. And you need to think about that. Not, not for the, not for the, the flying of the ships thing. That's kind of easy to do with because you're flying past things relatively fast, but what if someone gets out? And that's, that's the really difficult thing about this project is at any time, anyone can stop their ship, EVA out and study. Um, so that's, that's challenging. Um, <laughs> that's so yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but we don't, um, 
it's a, it's more shader based it's more shader driven um and and yeah lighting and effects are key so yeah the lighting plays uh, you can't can't be understated the importance of lighting and creating a scene uh, you can take the most beautiful asset in the world and put it in a bad lighting rig and it will look bad you can take the most subpar asset in the world put it on a beautiful lighting rig and it will look okay um it's like you know people can make hair dryers look decent in catalogs i want to buy one right and when you get it it's like oh it doesn't quite look like the pictures did yeah. it's, it's it's that kind of approach light light is 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 everything gotcha. yeah uh was the planet featured on, on in your segment the same planet used in the uh 3.0 demo at gamescom no a different planet okay uh was the were the wind effects real? Is 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 with, with the wind when things were flapping? Is that a is that a component of the procedural planet, or is that something you added in? Specifically no, every scene? every planet, much like the original engine, um, the 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 original engine has a, a what we call an environment tab, and in the environment in the environment tab, you could um, you could change gravity, you could change the wind direction, the the wind velocity. The wind, um, what we call kind of uh, events, so they're like pulses, and then it kind of cool down. Um, we we're transferring all that info to a sphere, essentially, which is a planet, right? Where mm -hmm. where the um, originally it was just on a flat plane, like a four K terrain. Now we're doing it on a whole planet, um, and every every. I mean, I'm I'm not going to speak for for the VFX guys, but every every VFX um, asset that is created directly ties into our wind system. Um, so if there's wind on the planet, it will blow. If there isn't, it will just rise or kind of sit there, right? Um, and that's that's how that's all driven. So you just increase the wind, and then you get this beautiful kind of directional kind of thing going across hmm. um, the the movement. And then obviously, like we're also already thinking about, like okay, these beautiful kind of fields, and you see a field full of grass, and you you get these waves going through the fields so there's all those kind of things i mean i don't want to speak for the for the environment guys but i obviously what well, I'm, I'm thinking about i want to put these things in these environments and I, and I want i want to play these systems to my to, to the advantage of the ships so um yeah that that's that's all um 100 kind of driven by literally one 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 kind of setting awesome uh how awesome is your job nathan i bet it's pretty awesome <laughs> um it is awesome i get to i get to make i get to make spaceships all day um there's times when you sat in the studio and it's it's tough it's really hard work um but but you kind of have a reality check sometimes that hey you know i get to wake up and and come into work and 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 make sci-fi um so it's, it's it's good and 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 the team are brilliant to work with as well so gotcha well let's see if we can find one more question before we let you go now uh uh, somebody asked, "Does that environment tab allow you to also change the water pane as well?" No, the water plane as well. Well, kind of. the The new system with the the planets, and I obviously I don't want to speak for for the environment guys too much. <laughs> uh, but well, the, well you the, went in, you created an environment, Nathan. No, so. I made a thing, uh, and it's um, you do. We have a sea level, um, a sea level that essentially you can change the radius of, and then you can change the radius of the planet itself. So. Um, that's that's how much that is driven like again the old system in the basic terrain editor had exactly the same thing but it was just on a plane so yeah um yeah that's that's how the how the water will be dealt with um but that's that's being looked at at the moment gotcha well that about wraps us up nathan sweet T told you to go by fast and easy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh you're you're our first uh two-time visitor on the new revamped reverse the verse so okay congratulations you're in the lead uh, although I think Paul Jones will be back soon enough, and he's going to try to he's going to try to catch up. Awesome! If you if you stop giving us awesome stuff for ATV every time we come back around, oh, we're maybe somebody else can catch up. Oh, we we're working on something very awesome at the moment, but <laughs> but you're not going to see it for a, um, a little while. And they say I'm a tease. They say I'm a tease. Uh, that if is... I'm excited about it, and I I don't get excited about much, but like yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's going to be good. All right. So that's Vehicle Art Director Nathan Deersley. Uh, I'm Community Manager Jared Huckabee. Uh, thanks for tuning in to Reverse the Verse live from uh, the UK. Uh, the Terrapin sale is still going on. It's uh, through the weekend. So if you haven't had a chance to, to get your Terrapin, uh, now's, your, uh, now's your chance. Uh, we are on the road to CitizenCon. 
October 9th, uh, live from LA. Uh, we'll be showing you all kinds of stuff. Chris hinted at some, uh, maybe some Squadron 42 stuff during our Gamescom stream. Uh, I'm not allowed to share anything else. I also don't know anything else yet. But uh, October 9th, that's coming up. So yeah, uh, next week's Around the Verse circles back to Los Angeles, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, look for that. Uh, look for that next week. Uh, again, Nathan, Jared, you guys are the awesome community. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers, guys.